joining us for a conversation is Gregory Beischer. He is the CEO of the premier project generator, Millrock Resources. Mr. Beischer, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks a lot, Maurice. As always, it's a great pleasure to speak with you. Well, mutual. So it's a pleasure to speak with you as Millrock Resources has some important updates coming out of Alaska in the form of battery metals and platinum group elements. Before we begin, Mr. Beischer, please introduce us to Millrock Resources and the unique opportunity the company presents for shareholders. Yeah, sure thing, Maurice. Of course, you know, as a shareholder of Millrock, that we're a, a generative uh, explorer. So we're early stage exploration geologists, uh, and we uh, counter some of the natural risk that's in early stage exploration by always partnering our projects. And and so that's what we've done. Uh, last year was a quite a building year for us. Uh, this is going to be the drilling year. So uh, lots of opportunities going forward. We just put out a, a press release uh, last week that's sort of a, a recap of uh, everything that Millrock's got going. And it, it's quite a long list. But certainly the Nikolai project, uh, a nickel copper cobalt uh, platinum group element project is, is the new one. And I'm very, very excited about it. Well, speaking of that, sir, take us to the Delta Mining District of Alaska. You have a long history there on the Nikolai Project dating back to the 1990s. Tell us more about the new acquisition. Yeah, well, actually, uh, truly, this is the second time I've uh, staked to these claims, Maurice. Uh, you know, as you probably remember, uh, I spent the early part of my career working for Inco. And of course, uh, Inco was at the time the largest nickel producer in the world. And uh, I got to uh, learn quite a bit about the, the particular types of rocks that are host to nickel deposits around the world. And when Inco moved me to Alaska, this was literally the very first project I worked on. Uh, we, uh, The team that I inherited here had just uh, made some interesting discoveries and we staked uh, thousands of claims to cover it. And we did uh, the first exploration and the first round of drilling, which uh, honestly was disappointing because uh, we didn't hit the massive uh, sulfides that we were hoping to hit, but rather we did hit uh, hundreds of meters of disseminated mineralization, which at the time uh, could not possibly uh, even be thought of as being feasible for a mining operation. Uh, the concentration of metal is just much too low, but things are different now. And uh, nickel is in such high demand and will become in so much higher demand that uh, indeed, uh, even at these uh, low grades of mineralization, it, it may very well be economic. And we're seeing other projects around uh, the world, uh, notably one near Timmins, Ontario in Canada, that, that's very, very similar geologically and mineralogically. So uh, we think we're on the right track here. And uh, we also think there's still a great potential for discovery of massive sulfide somewhere in the roots of the magmatic system. So uh, in other places on the project, we actually do have very, very high grades. So we know the rocks are capable of producing uh, high value uh, ores. Um, in both nickel and the platinum group elements, platinum and palladium, but also some of the rarer metals like uh, iridium and osmium and uh, rhodium. Uh, I know you are partial to rhodium and uh, <laughs> we have some exceptional uh, grades of mineralization uh, on this project. Well, it sounds very compelling. And the timing and the inclusion of the project in your property bank couldn't have come at a better time as the world is looking to go green. Now, to confirm, uh, there are indications that the nickel may be sulfide on the project. If, if that is correct, what are the competitive advantages of having nickel sulfide? Yeah, well, certainly um, we know for sure from the past drilling that the, the nickel is there in, in sulfide form. And uh, in other uh, places in the world, uh, lateritic or laterite uh, deposits of nickel occur, and, and they're a very important source. 
but the type of mining that has to be done is not necessarily the most friendly. Uh, these uh, deposits occur in tropical environments and uh, they're in the shallow subsurface. So it's necessary to remove the jungle cover, remove the upper layers of soil, mine the uh, valuable material and then reclaim it all. And, uh, you know, the operators that do this kind of work do a good job, but um, it, it does disrupt uh, the, uh, the forests in these places. And, uh, you know, I mean, um, sulfide mining has uh, some issues too, but uh, in the modern mining world, I think we're very protective uh, of the environment. Now, what are the goals and expectations that Millrock has? Uh, goals and expectations for this project, uh, honestly, are up in the air a little bit. You know, we, we know from the prior drilling that there's nickel there in the ground over very substantial drilled uh, inter thicknesses. And so it wouldn't take uh, too much drilling uh, for us to be able to outline a bona fide uh, resource of nickel, copper, platinum. Uh, it would take a few million dollars, but um, you know, suddenly we could have a very sizable resource of metal in the ground. So that's a possibility. If we stick uh, rigorously to our chosen business model, as we've always done so far, then uh, we will find a partner for this project. And we're putting out uh, feelers now uh, amongst our network of contacts uh, to see what kind of interest uh, might be there. But um, it's also possible that we could spin this particular project out into its own standalone company. Uh, and um, we're, we're, we're thinking about this. Certainly the project uh, is uh, of high enough quality and important enough that uh, it, it definitely warrants starting a company if that's the way we choose to go. Of course, people are the most important part of forming a new company, and so that's what we'd have to find. Now, when can we expect work to begin, and uh, what about news flow? Yeah, certainly on that, on the Nikolai project, uh, we'll do some reconnaissance type work this year. There's a database of information that uh, we know exists, uh, but we need access to it. That's going to cost a little bit of money, so we'll be working on that. And uh, then I think that the news will start to flow from there on this, this project. Now, leaving the Nikolai, Milwaukee Resources has an extensive property bank throughout Alaska. Can you walk us through some of the property bank and share some golden nuggets with us, if you will, please? Yeah, sure, sure thing. Um, <clears throat> pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, a couple of weeks ago, we announced that uh, Australian junior company Felix Gold uh, has uh, completed successfully its initial public offering. And uh, as part of us uh, selling the projects to Felix Gold, we received uh, nearly 10 million shares uh, of Felix Gold uh, that today have a value of, uh, you know, around $1.5 million. Uh, we can't sell any of them, and nor do we want to, because we think Felix is going to be spectacularly successful and that those shares are going to become much more valuable. And uh, that, in turn, will uh, help move Millrock share price upwards and, and reward uh, Millrock shareholders. So uh, drilling is a uh, anticipated to start as uh, early as uh, March and um, it will go all the way through the summer and into the fall on uh, four different projects in, in the Fairbanks, uh, greater Fairbanks, uh, Alaska area targeting gold. And uh, there's some great prospects. Uh, it's certainly in the right neighborhood. You know, uh, gold was first discovered in Fairbanks by Felix Pedro, uh, a prospector, 120 years ago now. And uh, they've been mining the surficial gold deposits uh, ever since then. The, the great uh, Kinross Fort Knox gold mine is in the district. And there's been some recent discoveries that I don't think people uh, realize have been made yet, uh, for example. Apple, uh, that made by Free Gold Ventures, which is uh, right uh, right next door to some of the ground that Felix will be working on. So we, we have the, think they have a great chance of success coming, and that uh, that's going to uh, maybe may make a real uh, financial windfall for Millrock at some point soon. Any updates on the 64 North project, sir? 
Right. Yeah, very excited about this too. Our uh, mutual teams between Resolution Minerals, our partner who's the manager of the project and our staff, uh, we've come up with a new interpretation using all the, the exploration information that, that Resolution has uh, developed over the last two years. And uh, we've got a, a great prospect to drill. Uh, it's called Tourmaline Ridge, and there's some strong gold occurrences and uh, soil anomalies at surface, uh, but it's the geophysics that we've done that that's, uh, we think uh, helped trace the structure that is known to host gold at the nearby Pogo gold mine uh, over onto our property at, the, at this prospect. So uh, it's got a really good chance of uh, exploration success. And so Resolution will go about the business of uh, raising a little bit more money and uh, securing a drill contract and then uh, drill the holes later this year. So I really can't wait for that one. It sounds like I'm hearing a lot of catalysts and a lot of news flow. Yeah, indeed. You know, I mean, we put out that press release last week and I go through the list and of, of things that we've got going on and I'm, I go, wow, it's uh, like I really think our uh, company should be valued higher than a market capitalization of, of just around $10 million. Uh, but it is what it is. I got to get out and, and uh, tell people uh, all the great things that, that Millrock's got going and that's what I'm doing. And um <clears throat> You know, and it's not just uh, Alaska either. Uh, we're, we're still very active in Sonora. We've made an agreement there that uh, should see drilling on our copper porphyry project called Batamote. And uh, I think we're going to have uh, other exploration ongoing as well. So uh, you never know. We could uh, hit the big one down there too. So uh, <clears throat> and uh, sticking with our model, it's uh, all with funding from other companies, uh, earning interest into our project or with us having a large share position in the funding partner company. Well, at Proven and Probable, we're delighted to share the value proposition, and we believe in the value proposition. And that also includes my son. I think I've shared with you several times. He is a shareholder. He's actually uh, gotten one of his twin brothers to now become a shareholder as well. So it's a. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, often you and I have talked about the share price. Yes, I know you've worked hard, and we want to get the share price higher. But if you're a shareholder and you believe in the story. I think we can all go back to some of the ethos that Rick Rule always shares with us. Don't complain when a good company gives you a sale. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, a good one to go by on this, uh, Maurice. You know, you look at a six cent share price and, uh, uh, man, any of these catalysts uh, could make that double, triple, quadruple in, in a very short period of time. And uh, if there's real genuine success, even so much more. So I think the, you know, the possibilities are, are fantastic for Millrock and anyone buying in at these prices uh, is getting a real bargain for sure. Well, if we look at the, just the EV business model or going green as we are going, 5% of the auto sales here recently have been EVs. That's going to grow up tenfold. And if the Nikola project uh, comes to fruition, as we believe it will be, that is going to definitely move the share price. Well, I would sure hope so. Yeah. Well, in closing, Mr. Beister, what would you like to say to shareholders? Well, uh, I really think Millrock is a bargain at this price. I encourage uh, shareholders to, to pick up a few more or, or new shareholders to, to come on board because we've got a really good chance uh, this year. Like I say, much of last year was putting the agreements together. Uh, get everything ready to drill. But uh, this is going to be a big year of drilling on Millrock projects. Mr. Beister, for someone that wants to learn more about Millrock Resources, please share the contact details. Sure. You can just Google Millrock Resources and you'll, you'll get right to our website and uh, you can find uh, contact information for Melanie Henderson, who uh, does our investor relations work. Mr. Beister, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Wishing you and Millrock Resources the absolute best, sir. Thank you very much, Maurice. Talk again soon. Yes, sir. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, 
or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.